This video is designed to show how to configure TCPCOM so that more than one application program can access the same serial port on a PC at the same time. In this example, I have a barcode scanner connected to the COM1 port on my PC, and I would like to run two serial communications programs that both read in the input data from the scanner. Normally, Microsoft Windows will only allow one program to open a serial port at a time. TCPCOM can be used to get past this limitation and allow multiple applications to open the same serial port simultaneously. When you run TCPCOM, you are presented with a window containing a set of serial communication settings on the left and a set of TCP IP communication settings on the right. In the serial communication settings, I will choose the serial communications parameters required by the barcode scanner that I have connected to the COM1 port. In the TCP IP settings, I will select the option that reads, This PC will act as TCP server. When configured as a TCP IP server, TCPCOM will automatically enter the IP address of the PC it is running on and will also enter a default local port number of 1000. You can change the local port number to anything that you like, although the default value should be fine. Make a note of both of these numbers and click the Activate button. The COM status should say Open and the TCP IP status should say Listening. The next step is to select File and New to open a second connection window. In this window, I will select the COM port COM4 and check the checkbox labeled Create Virtual COM Port in the Serial Communication settings. In the TCP IP settings, I will select the option that reads This PC will act as TCP Client and enter the IP address and port number that I noted earlier from the first TCP COM window. Finally, I will click the Activate button. I will then select File and New again to open a third connection window. In this window, I will select the COM port COM5 and check the checkbox labeled Create Virtual COM Port in the Serial Communication settings. Just like in the previous window, I will select the option that reads This PC will act as TCP Client and enter the same IP address and port number that I noted earlier from the first TCPCOM window. Finally, I will click the Activate button in this third window. What I just did was to create two virtual COM ports, COM4 and COM5, that are both connected to the physical COM1 port through a TCP IP client server connection. The process is almost identical to sharing a serial port across a network, except that I am doing everything on a single workstation instead of across a network. I am also taking advantage of the fact that when an instance of TCPCOM is configured as a TCP IP server, it will accept multiple client connections. This is why I can create two virtual COM ports that both connect as clients to the same TCPCOM server. I will now minimize TCPCOM to get it out of the way, and then I will run two instances of the hyperterminal program that is included with Windows in the Accessories folder. For this example, I have one instance of Hyperterminal pre-configured to open the COM4 port and the second instance pre-configured to open the COM5 port. Please note that I am using the Hyperterminal program purely for demonstration purposes. You can use any serial communication software that you like to open the virtual COM ports created by TCPCOM. I will now scan a few barcodes using the barcode scanner that I have connected to the COM1 port on my PC. When I do this, the data is received by both instances of Hyperterminal. The connections between the two virtual COM ports and the physical COM1 port are both fully bidirectional. Therefore, I can send data in both directions through either connection. You can also configure the two virtual COM port connections to transmit data in only one direction if you prefer using the I.O. options setting available in TCPCOM. As you can see, configuring TCPCOM to share serial ports between multiple serial communications programs is extremely easy. Once you have your TCPCOM configured and activated, you can either minimize it to the system tray, or you can configure it to run from your startup folder, or as a Windows service so that it runs automatically in the background when you start up your PC.